using the Michael Dodge and Bomb method to retouch your image is not as hard as you think. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily learn how to use Michael Dodge and Bomb to retouch your image. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing on Ctrl J and just remove the blemishes. And to remove the blemishes, I'm going to be using the focus separation to remove the blemishes because that's how I remove my blemishes. You can use any method that works for you to remove the blemishes, but I'm going to use the focus separation method to remove the blemishes. And to do that, I'm just going to come to my retouching academy, click on focus separation and just use 10 for this image and click on enter and since i want to remove the blemishes i'll cut my high frequency because the high frequency consists of the texture while the low frequency consists of the colors so i'll just cut my high frequency and just zoom in pick my close time tool make sure my mood is on normal opacity is 100 flow is 100 make sure sample is set to correct layer and not all layer if your sample is set to all layers or current and below if i just sample and just paint you can see what's happened to the image it's not going to make the image look good so make sure your sample is on currently if you're using the focus separation method to retouch your image so i'm going to zoom in just sample from a close by area and just remove the blemishes sample and remove the blemishes first pattern is to sample your keyboard and remove the blemishes now let me give you a quick tip if you want to use the method of javon to retouch your image make sure you take your time to remove the blemishes that way, image is going to look smooth and look even more better because we are going to use strictly Michael Dodge and Bond to retouch this image. We are not using focus separation, we are using just Michael Dodge and Bond. So make sure you take a lot of time to remove your blemishes. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. I'm just going to take my time to remove the blemishes. Okay, now we've removed the blemishes from this image. So let's see the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. The before. And after we've removed the blemishes for this image now what i'm going to do i'm going to create the dodge and bond that i want to use to retouch this image and to do that i'll come to my adjustment layer i'll click on curves adjustment layer i'm just going to take this mid-tones up like this i feel it's okay like this i'm just going to invert it by pressing ctrl r to invert and i'm going to name this one dodge double click on this place and name it dodge and i'll come to my adjustment layer again click on curves adjustment layer again and just bring this part down like this and just invert it by pressing on Ctrl I or Command I if you're using the Mac and just rename this one bond and I'll put the bond below the dodge and what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to group them with my dodge selected, I'll press on my bond just press Ctrl G to group and add the layer mask, I'm just going to rename this group D and B, dodge and bond click on OK now what I'm going to do, I'm going to brighten the dark part and darken the bright part looking at this image, we cannot see the part that are bright or the part that are dark so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a check layer to enable me to see where to dodge and where to burn. So to do that, I'll come to my adjustment layer and just create a black and white adjustment layer. Once I create a black and white adjustment layer, I'm just going to bring the red down like this. And bring the red on like this. And what I'm going to do next, I'll come to my adjustment layer again, create a levels adjustment layer and just move this part inside like this. Okay. Right now, I can see where to dodge and where to burn. It's very right now. So I'm just going to group them and just rename this one check layer. So what I'm going to do right now, those parts that are looking too dark, I'm just going to brighten them up. While those parts that are looking too bright, I'm just going to darken them just to even out the way light falls on the skin to make it smooth. What I'm going to do, I'll cut my dodge and layer, click on my dodge, pick my normal brush tool, make sure I'm using a soft round brush, make sure my opacity is set to 100 and I'll just change my flow to two percent click on enter and make sure my smoothness is on 10 make sure i'm using a white brush because the layer is on black so make sure i'm using a white brush so i'm going to zoom in a little bit and just reduce my brush size by clicking on the square bracket key on your keyboard to increase and decrease your brush size and just brush on this part right here just to brighten it up just to even as the colors right there like that so i'm going to brush on this part that face are looking too dark i'm just going to brush them just to make it look even like that so just look at your image carefully and see if there's any parts you want in burn and any parts you want to dodge and another thing you should take note if you're using this dodge and burn just click on your brush settings right here make sure the edge of your brush is smooth like mine right here if yours is not smooth make sure your smoothing is checked so that the edge of your brush is going to be smooth and it's not going to leave any hard edges so you should take note of that so i'm just going to has this and just continue brushing so i'm just going to quickly do it so you can see the effect of what we just did now so i'm going to do the same thing for the nose right here i feel it's looking too dark i'm going to paint on it and remember make sure your flow is set to two percent or one if you want 
but I just prefer to leave my own two percent. And once I'm done with this image, I'm going to upload it online so you guys can see the final results of using just my to touch your image without using frequency separation. Now I'll come to my bond. I'm going to bond this part right here. I'm going to bond this part right here and dodge this part right here just to even out the way light falls on the image. So I'm going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing. I think I'm going to reduce my flow to one. I'm going to bond this part right here. Let me push it before and after I'll force it just did so you can have an idea of what we are actually doing. I'm just going to hide this my check layer once I hide it. Then I just show you what we just did so you can see the before and after. This is the before. And this is the after the before and the after you can see the massive difference of which you can see how smooth this image is looking this is the before and this is the after the before and the after so that's what i'm going to be doing for the whole of this image and the only downside of using my code to to your image is that it takes a lot of time and focus separation method is much more faster than using this micro dodge method to retouch your image so if you want to retouch an image for your portfolio, you can just take your time to use this method. It's going to give you the best results. But if you have a lot of image to retouch, just use the frequent separation method to retouch the image. So I'm going to take my time to do my micro dodge above for this image and show you the before and after of everything I did. Okay, now let's see the before and after of what we just did. So this is the before and this is the after. The before and the after. You can see how smooth this image is looking right now. Our uh, before. And after what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to come here and looking at this place right here, I feel it's looking too bright. So I'll cut my bone, pick my normal brush tool, and just burn this part right here. I feel that looking too bright. I mix them. So just take your time, look at the image and work on it and make it look better. Now what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to come to my feather. So click on your layer mask with your dodge, come to the feather and just feather it just about five pixels. And for the bone, just feather the bone a little bit again. So let's see the before and after and you can choose to reduce the opacity of the dodge if you want i feel the dodge is looking too strong so i'm just going to reduce the opacity to about 80 percent okay and i'll delete my check layer because i don't really need it so let's see the before and after this is the before and this is the after the before and the after i feel this image is looking good like this now this thing i'm going to do for this image i'm just going to brighten the eyes and so brighten the eyes i have an action for that i'm going to click on the action and just click on eyes and teeth and just pick my normal brush tool make sure forget is set to white opacity is set to 100 flow is set to 100 like that and i'm just going to paint on the eyes the white part of the eyes and i'll do the same thing for this other one right here now what I'm going to do next, I'll come to my adjustment layer again, click on brightness and contrast. I'm just going to increase the brightness and also increase the contrast like this. And just invert the layer by pressing on Ctrl I to invert the layer. So after I invert the layer, I'm just going to paint on the eyes, inside the eyes, not the white part, just inside the eyes like that. And I'm just going to increase the contrast a little bit like this. So let's see the before and after for the eyes. This is the before. And this is the after the before and the after if you feel it's too strong you can just reduce the opacity a little bit i'm going to reduce opacity like this so this is the, and this is the after the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to do my control dodge and burn and to do that i'm going to come to my touching academy just click on dodge and burn curves delete this check layer and just come to my dodge pick my normal brush to make sure my flow is set to 100 opacity is set to 100 i'm just going to draw a couple of lines on the forehead like this do the same thing right here and do the same thing right and do the same thing right here same thing right here on the jaw like this and i think i'm going to do same thing right here i'll do the same thing right here like this right here right here i'll do the same thing right here why for the bone i'll come to my bone i'm just going to do something like this for the bone do something like this right right here right here right here like this and a little bit here and a little bit here like this and i'm going to do a little bit here just some at the edge like that like that okay all right 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to my dodge. Once my layer mask is selected, I'm going to come to my properties. One of my properties, I'm going to see feather. I'm just going to increase the feather of the dodge like this. 66 works for me. Then for the bone, I'll do the same thing for the bone. I'm just going to increase the feather. Let's see, yeah, 40. Let's see what 40 looks like. Okay, 45. Now let's see the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. The before and the after. The before and the after. I think I'm still going to increase the feather of the dodge a little bit. I'm going to increase the feather of the dodge like this. Okay, it works for me. Let's see. The before and the after. The before and the after. It's looking good like this. Now I'm just going to group everything so I can show you where we started from and where we are right now. Now, this is where we started from and this is where we are right now. The next thing I'm going to do for this image, I'm going to fix this part of the eyes right here that are looking scanty. So I'm just going to fix that. And to do that, I'll just pick my close down tool, create a new empty layer. Make sure current and below layer is selected. Sample from the close by area and just paint on this part right here like this just to fill those parts out sample from the close by area and just paint on these areas like this just to fill those area out sample again and just paint just to fill those area out and I'll come to this other side sample and paint just to fill those area sample and paint like that sample and paint just to fill those here and you can choose to increase and decrease your both sides according to the part you are working on sample and just paint like this to fill those here to make it look good sample and paint all right it's looking good like this now let's see the before and after this is the before and this is the after the before and the after now we are going to color grade this image i feel this image is looking looking like this i'm just going to color grade this image now and to color the good image, I'm first of all going to work on the hair. So I'll come to my adjustment layer, click on selective color, just come to the blacks, and just add a little bit of contrast to the black on the hair like that, and just invert it. Once I invert it, pick my normal brush tool, look to my foreground color, I set to white, opacity 100, flow 100, and just paint on the hair, just on the hair alone, like that. And I'll do the same thing for this hair right here. Same thing right here. And here. And here. Like that. So I'm just going to feather it. Once I feather it, I'm going to reduce the, the opacity. Like that. So these are before and these are after. Now I feel the skin tone is looking looking like that. I'm just going to enhance it. And to enhance it, I'll go to my adjustment layer again. Go to my vibras. I'm just going to increase the vibras like this. And what I'm going to do next, I'll come to my adjustment layer again, come to my selective color, and I'll come to my reds. For the reds, I'm going to move the blacks inside for the reds. And I'm just going to play with my cyan. So if I take my cyan to this side, I do to the image. If I take it to this side, I'm adding this to the image. So I'm going to take it to this side a little bit just to add a little bit of red to the image. To uh, take minus 9. Why for the magenta? If I take my magenta to this side, I'm adding grays to the image. But if I take it to this side, I'm adding magenta to the image. I'm going to add a little bit of greens to the image. So let's say minus 2. And if my yellow is, if I take it to this side, I'm adding magenta to the image. But if I take it to this side, I'm adding yellows to the image. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellows to the yellows like this. Let's say plus 1. And um, I'll come to my yellows. My yellows, I'm not going to increase the brightness of the yellows like this. And then um, take the science to this side to add a bit of reds to the yellows. And also for the magenta, if I take my magenta to this side, I'm adding greens to the yellows. If I take to this side, I'm adding magenta to the yellows. So I'm going to add a little bit of magenta to the yellows like this. So let's say plus two. And I feel it's looking like this. So let's see the before and after. This is the before. This is the after. Just a subtle color grading, but you can see the effect. This is how it was before. And this is the after. It's looking good like this and I like it. What I can do next, I can just decide to increase the colors on the eyes and the lips. So to do that, I come to my adjustment layer, come to my vibrance, and just increase the saturation of the image. Then invert it and just pick my normal brush tool with my white brush selected, just paint on the lips like this. And also paint on the eyes like this, just to enhance the colors of the eyes. So let's see the before and after. This is the before. And this is the after, but I feel the effect is too strong, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity to about 60%. It's looking good like this. This is the before, and 
this is the after. Now, the last I'm going to do for this image, I'm going to put this tray here is right here. To do that, I just create a new empty layer, pick my close stamp tool, and change my sample to correct and below. Just sample from a close by area and just paint on the um hair right here to just remove the strand of hair. Sample from a close by area, just paint on the hair right there to remove them like that. Sample and just paint to remove them. Sample and just paint like that to remove them. Sample and paint to remove them like that. So let's see the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. So you can choose to use the liquify to arrange the hair and to do that, just leave on Ctrl Shift Alternate E. Create a stamp visible layer, come to your filter, come to liquify and just click your forward wrap tool. Just shape the hair according to how you want it like that, just to make it look even more better. So I'm just going to shape the hair the way I want it to make it look even more better. Okay. Now I feel it's okay like this. Let's see where we started from where we are. So this is the before and this is the after. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this part inside a little bit like this. And I'll move this part down inside a little bit. And bring this part up. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this face right here. And just um, try to make the face a little bit slimmer. Okay. All right. I think it's okay like this. Now let's see what's left for what we are. This is the before and this is the after. I'll click on OK. So I'm just going to group everything and show you the before and after of what we did. So this is the before and this is the after. I'm going to stop here for this image and I'm going to save this image right now. And to save your image, just click on Ctrl Shift Alternate F and I'm going to show you save for web legacy or just come to your file, come to your export and click on save for web legacy and make sure this place is progressive is checked. Make sure your quality is set to 75 or 80, but mine is only set to 75 and I'm just going to click on save and just save this image right now. So that's how you can touch your image using the micro dodge and bomb. And if you have any question, let me know in the comment section. If you want to learn how to retouch using the focus emotion method, click on this video right here. I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay creative.